Now, I think most of you probably remember the story of Mattress Girl at Columbia in New York City. She accused a man of raping her, and she went to the police, she went to the school, and everybody that investigated that said they couldn't prove that this man had raped her. This was Emma something or other, right? And what basically happened, in case you don't know the story, she was having a relationship with a man and she wanted anal. And so he gave it to her, but uh, evidently it was a little bit too rough for her pleasure, or he pulled his condom. I don't remember what the heck it was, but there was some kind of an encounter. Again, typical he said, she said. Unfortunately, the, the women who are sexually assaulted in this manner uh, or raped with the he said, she said, very hard to prove. Certainly understand the frustration. When something bad like this happens to you and you cannot prove it, that's horrible stuff. So Senator Christian Gillibrand, who is running for the presidency, she's upset that not every military sexual assault accusation leads to a conviction. The senator, who has been the most vocal about how we must believe all women, who makes sexual assault accusations recently expressed anger to a decorated general because not everyone who is accused is convicted. Now, this is a problem. This, and I'm serious, this is a problem. There are women who are raped and sexually assaulted and abused by men, and it cannot be proven in a court of law. Whether this happened the way she said it or he said it just, it's one of those things. It's unfortunate, it really is. And so this is where you get some of the statistics from feminists to say, well, 90% of rapists never spend a day in jail. Oh, what they mean, of course, is 90% of accused rapists never spend a day in jail because it's very, very difficult to prove. If they said 90% of convicted rapists never spend a day in jail, you know, we'd have a whole different set of things to discuss because that would obviously be an abomination. Women who were raped and the man was convicted doesn't spend a day in jail. It rarely happens. Brock Turner comes to mind. Occasionally, there's a couple other ones that somehow float through where a man is convicted of rape in some way and doesn't get any jail time. I don't know how that happens. I really don't. I'm not a lawyer. There's probably some, you know, backdoor deals going on, plea bargains, whatever. Could be favoritism. I don't know. But the bottom line is 90% of men accused of rape do not spend time in jail because they are not convicted. And, and that's a major problem with the feminazis because they believe, as in the Me Too movement, a woman points a finger just like Title IX and that man's life is destroyed. Evidence? Who needs evidence? We don't need any of that. Christian Gillibrand, Senator Gillibrand, during a hearing to reappoint General James C. McConville to the grade of general and to nominate him to be Chief of Staff of the United States Army, claimed sexual assaults were on the rise in the military and convictions were on the decline. The percentage of cases that are ending in conviction are going down, Gillibrand claims. Quote, I'm tired of excuses. I'm tired of statements from commanders who say zero tolerance. I am tired of the statement I get over and over from the chain of command. We've got this, man. We've got this. You don't have it. You're failing us. Gillibrand trotted out a self-reported it's important to remember self-reported survey showing the number of women claiming they were sexually assaulted has risen about a percentage point. What does sexual assault include, everybody? It includes groping, unwanted kissing, unwanted attention, grabbing someone in the butt, you know, grabbing their shoulder when it's not wanted, rubbing up against them, dancing, and stuff like that. Oh, it also includes rape. But you see, feminists have been very, very successful in convincing you that when you hear the words sexually assaulted, that means the woman was raped. That is not the case. Anyway, it says it's risen about a percentage point. Gillibrand misleadingly presented this as a fact that sexual assaults are rising. She also brought out the tired and debunked claim that one in five women are sexually assaulted. No, 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 I believe it. Sexually assaulted, not raped. I would say probably four in five women have been, by definition, sexually assaulted. Groped at a bar, you know, unwanted kissing, maybe stalked. You know, I mean, there are a lot of freaky dudes out there, right? And, uh, <laughs> and nightclubs don't even go there, right? I, <laughs> no, thank you. The one in five statistic, you see, again, they want you to think one in five women have been raped, which is not the case. No statistics anywhere that we can find. Even if we say and go with the numbers that we know and say, 
I think the number now is uh, only 43% of rapes are reported. Even then, you get nowhere near one in five, ever. I don't know. There's so many statistics, it's really hard to keep track of it. <laughs> all this crap. The self-reported surveys with these broad definitions of what constitutes sexual assault. I think this is the cost survey. The people surveyed said they didn't report their alleged sexual assault because they didn't think it was serious. Since the majority of the sexual assaults involve merely unwanted behavior, according to Ash, it is easy to see why people who respond in the affirmative on such surveys don't think they're actual victims. In the cost survey, if a woman had a drink and had sex, I believe that was considered rape. Depends on how you ask the question, right? Gillibrand sees all of the women who accuse somebody um, of something are survivors. While the campus sexual assault epidemic, which it's not, gets most of the attention, Gillibrand has demanded that the same lack of due process be applied in the military and eventually the entire judicial system. That's what these feminists want. The, the proof is too much of a burden. It's oppression. So why do I bring up mattress girl and uh, senator gillibrand because it was mattress girl after investigation after investigation after investigation after lawsuit they couldn't find evidence to support her claim so she carried a mattress around on campus for like a year after this assault and Kristen gillibrand invited mattress girl to a state of the union address as a special guest to show her support for survivors. You see, proof is a burden. Evidence is oppression. Asking questions when a woman reports a rape is rape culture, don't you know? James Maxwell, thank you for listening.